What we're going to do in this video is we're going to introduce you to the OD landscape if you're just getting started, a little bit about what is OD, how do you do it, when do you know when you're doing it and what your next steps are as well. So hopefully you find this useful. So my name is Garen Rauch and I'm co-chair of CIPD Central London, chair of CIPD London OD Group and in the daytime I'm co-founder and director for Distinction Business Consulting and with Danny Bacon we're OD consultants and we work with organisations from across the spectrum um, helping um, through organisation development. So just a little bit about the OD landscape. So um, some really interesting research that was recently, which is just looking at, you know, what is the breadth of OD roles that you see out there and some really interesting findings. So the first thing is, is that they found 500 OD job descriptions. 40 operational definitions of organization development, 31 competency publications, and 11 competency frameworks as well. So, for example, like I'm a fellow of the CIPD and I followed the CIPD profession map according to their OD framework to become a fellow and I had to show evidence based practice that I've applied it in my work as well. And that's one of 11. Um, and also, there are 144 different OD graduate programs. So, that means um, there's just so many different definitions of OD, it's just quite overwhelming. Also, on top of that, um, major consulting firms have cornered the sort of the change market. They've really moved into it. IT consultants have encroached onto what is traditional OD territory. Things like design thinking take a similar approach to OD. Um, and when clients, for example, approach us, they don't actually ask for OD support. What they do is they ask, like, they define a business problem that they've got and they ask us to work on it for them. So it could be like they want to achieve their strategy or they've got an internal challenge, whatever it is. So, you know, people aren't necessarily explicitly asking for OD. So what this all means is there's often you know, not a straightforward purest approach to OD when you're looking for roles. And not only that, many roles in OD are actually hybrid. So they're actually a combination between the two. So the research we just highlighted found a whole wealth of different titles. So things such as like director of DE&I and organizational development. So that means that sort of combining two roles in one of which organization development is part of it as well. So as a result, um, it can all just feel just a little bit overwhelming and, and kind of knowing where to begin. So what we'll do in the following part is we're just going to help you define OD a little bit. So as we said, there's um, over 40 definitions and this is just a range of them. So we're going to give you our view on organization development. So here's just a brief overview of it. So organization development is basically about improving organization effectiveness in the service of achieving your organization's goals. It's about creating a more aligned organization. So aligning the structure, whether it's a matrix, functional, holacracy structure, your organization culture and the strategy. And this is all aligned with the realities and operational reality of the organization. And also, OD is really focused on increasing employee collaboration and cooperation in the way that it works. So it's connecting different parts of the organization together, helping them work together better because that produces results. Um, it's about increasing interpersonal trust, whether that's between layers of management and, and staff, whether it's between divisions, departments, teams, whatever. And also working towards increasing levels of satisfaction and commitment of employees um, because that is directly correlated to productivity and increases in output as well. So how do you do it? Well, and what is the approach? So it's best to describe OD as um, applying behavioral science in its work. Um, so we take lots of proven methodologies for working with organizations uh, and then applying them um, through change and transformation. And in the way we work as well, we also take um, evidence from within the organization. We take an evidence based approach. So we, we measure, we diagnose um, and then we create change based on that. Uh, we take a systemic approach. So what we do is we, we treat an organization as a whole system and understand that there are interdependencies throughout the organization. So if you change this, if you change that process, it might impact this uh, employee group here. So it's really understanding the interdependencies before we start to make change. And it's also humanistic. It really focuses on people and working towards people receiving and achieving their full potential through their work and the way in which they developed. It's also extremely participative and inclusive. So what it does is it works really hard to involve members of the organization in defining the challenge, 
understanding the organization um, and then creating solutions. Um, often OD believes that um, the solution is often always in the system. Um, and it's really important to involve people in it because then they're more likely to buy into it and then implement it in their work rather than just focusing on, say, a leadership group. It's actually looking at, at the bigger picture. And then finally, that it's sustainable. So it's just about uh, building capability and the skills and knowledge so that people can continue to support and work better and they're not dependent on the sort on the support of the consultant or the OD practitioner. It allows the OD practitioner to go and do other work and people are empowered to actually solve their own problems. Um, the really nice saying that uh, my colleague Danny identified by Kurt Lewin is if you really want to truly understand something, try to change it. And the application of OD, it's really about understanding the system that you're working with um, and the logic behind it and why it works and how it works. So, you know, how does power work in the organization? How does culture work? Um, what's the history? How does that shape it as well? And so let's look at the foundations of organization development. So organization development is often described as the magpie profession. And the reason being is because we borrow um, from the thinking of lots of other professions because we work at such a broad level in organizations. We need lots of different approaches to help achieve our goals. So some of the places that OD draws upon are things like sociology, social psychology, systems theory, anthropology, organization behavior, management theory, complexity theory, biology, and even cybernetics as well. And that's just a smaller. And there's always new research, new methods being developed. Um, and that's why a lot of people describe OD as a calling and a, and a lifetime's work, because there's always more to learn, to apply and do brilliant work as well. Um, some of the foundational thinkers behind it, obviously we mentioned Kurt Lewin, the founder of OD, uh, Wilfred Bion had done some really interesting work on group dynamics, which is just fascinating if you want to read about it. Edgar Sheen or Edgar Schein, uh, that did some great work on organization culture and consulting. Um, Douglas McGregor that looked at power um, in organizations. Then, of course, people that you, you heard of, like Abraham Maslow, um, Chris Algris, often in practice his surname, um, double loop thinking or double loop learning. And then some of the more modern thinkers as well that you may have heard of. So Miang Chung Judge, unfortunately, passed away recently. Uh, and we'll reference her in a moment. Some great thinking about defining OD. Bob Marshak about contracting. Uh, Gervais Bush about interpersonal mush. And for those of you that are interested in organization design, um, Naomi Stanford's a really prolific and good author around organization development, sorry, organization design, and also has a really good blog as well. So we mentioned about uh, Mian. Um, nearly all OD practitioners have one edition of this book, either on their Kindle or on their bookshelf. And what it does, it just gives you a really nice introduction to OD and the systems and, and sorry, and the theories that underpin it. So for example, when I was sort of studying um, organization development for the first time, some of the things took a little bit of time to sink in for I truly understood it like social constructionism. But once you do, uh, it really does change your perspective on how the world is and how it works. Who practices OD? Um, so we're really passionate and really driven. Um, and we believe that everyone should have an OD mindset, no matter um, what type of organization you're in, public sector, private sector, charity, whether you're internal OD, external, whether you're a leader or a manager or an HR practitioner. If everyone implements an OD mindset into their work, it actually makes organizations work a lot better. And a lot of the, the traditional friction that you see um, starts to evaporate and the organization just becomes more effective. So what does it actually look like in practice? When do you know that you're doing it? Well, let's think about what it can improve. So we spend a lot of time um, working on helping develop leadership management capability in organizations. And the reason why we spend so much time there is because it's one of the maximum points of leverage. Um, it can make the, one of the biggest differences. We also work um, on individual team and even organizational conflicts. So sometimes you just have differences and different perspectives and different ideologies between departments and divisions, um, and you just have to help them find a way through. So it's not about winners or losers. It's about helping them find a way to work together, um, helping the organization define and understand its current values and maybe implement some aspirational values and how that impacts the way of working, um, to work with helping organizations develop their strategy to 
to make sure it's it's meaningful, it's it's ambitious enough, but it's related to organizational reality and also how you actually implement it too. So to make sure that the different parts of the organization are exactly what they need to do. Um, and as things change, inevitably, we can adapt our strategy. Other things are things like organization culture. So we'll measure it and then we'll then make changes and improve it and then remeasure it change projects so you might really change a good process a product to your market od can play a really big role in helping employees and leadership adapt to that and really stacking the odds of probability and success in your favor uh, performance management and the systems that underpin it is a big domain where od gets involved and also helping organizations get ready for the future of work there's been so much change new technologies ai is coming for example um, od can really support organizations in achieving that and then there's some other areas. So organization design, uh, which is often described as hard OD um, and ways of working. So there's been lots of changes with hybrid, for example. So that has to take a lot of work from employees, from processes, from structures, from managers to make it work. It doesn't just happen by accident. And OD can help facilitate that in a really efficient and effective way. So how do you do OD? Well, um, maybe think about it as a, a set of golf clubs from woods for big shots and irons for medium shots and putters for easy shots you kind of just choose your club according to what the kind of work is that you're doing but it's often a mixture and a blend there's no one way so some days you might be um, doing some design some days you might be running workshops or facilitating some days you might be uh, intervening at a small group uh, and sometimes you know you're bringing the whole organization together it, it really differs depending on the task that you're doing um, another thing that OD practitioners find really useful is you're often kind of parachuted into a situation or, or an organization or team or whatever, and you've got to make sense of what's going on. Um, and so um, there's some really nice theories that can really help you make sense of what's going on and help you understand what the next steps might be in order to help the organization or the team move forward. So, for example, you know, we might be in an organization that's in uh, in conflict and we'll suddenly think of Barry Johnson and his polarity management uh, and that will suddenly, ah, OK, so that's what's going on here. And then you can then choose approach according to it. Um, the other thing about um, OD is it's really important to intervene at different levels within the organization. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't do whack-a-mole where you sort of solve the problem at this level, but then another problem just pops up next to it. So you'll often find yourself intervening at individual levels. So you might just be coaching a manager, a leader. Um, you might be mediating or facilitating between two individuals from two different teams or within the team. Um, you might find that you're working at a group level because you need everyone's buy-in and, and everyone's inclusion and ideas and you want to leverage a collective IQ of the group. You might also work at an intergroup level. So you're actually helping you know, two different functions, sales and risk, work together in a better way to serve the organization. But you just need to bring everyone together. And sometimes there's just no alternative. You've just got to bring everyone together in the same room because the change involves everyone. Everyone needs to be included in it as well. So what next? So we're going to provide a link. So what the brilliant thing um, from the OD community, what they've done for us is we reached out and said, look, can you share your stories? And we've given everyone four questions for them to answer. So we've got some videos and we've got some some written submissions of people's stories about their journey into OD, how, what they studied and what tips they would provide and to people sort of starting out. So you'll find that in the comments below, um, our link there. And also, as I said, we're running the CIPD event in January. Um, which you're really welcome to attend. I'm also running another organization design event, which is like getting in and doing your first OD design event. And that'll be running in March. And we've got some brilliant experts coming to us for that as well. So just want to say a huge thank you. Um, we run videos like this pretty much uh, weekly or even monthly. Um, so if you want to be notified, just hit um, subscribe and the bell button and you'll be notified as soon as the next video comes out. And these are all organization development videos that for budding OD practitioners or leaders and managers that just want to bring really new novel ways of working to help optimize the working of their teams and their organizations as well. Cheers.